My name is Elliot Feynman. On the morning of December 31st, 2006, a Chicago policewoman came to my door to tell me that my son had been murdered the night before in a restaurant having dinner with his wife in San Diego. The murderer would turn out to be a paranoid schizophrenic who had legally obtained the gun. It took me a long time to be able to function again, and when I was able to function, uh, I closed my practice. I was a strategic marketing advisor to Fortune 500 companies and decided to bring that skill set to the uh, fight for sane gun laws. Michael's loss is the best I can describe it as bewildering. It, it's been bewildering since the day I found out about it. It's bewildering today. Uh, June is a particularly difficult month for me because not only is it Father's Day, it's my birthday. And when Michael is not here, uh, every birthday, every Father's Day is always December 31st, 2006. It never changes. A few days before, I've come to understand now, consciously, it used to happen unconsciously, that a few days before, a day or two before, a day or two after, I kind of stopped functioning properly. Uh, I can't focus, I don't think, I'm not, uh, I'm agitated. Uh, I didn't connect it uh, until I did connect it, and that happens three times a year, Father's Day, my birthday, uh, actually four times a year, Michael's birthday and the day that Michael was, was murdered. Uh, I can say f a few things, the, that's three things that stand out. I remember the first time I left after Michael had died, it was several months later, and I left at something someone said, and I was horrified. How could I laugh? My son was dead. How could I possibly laugh? I, I just felt such guilt. And then uh, it came to pass that I was able to function and do some work, and then I got up from working and say, how, said, how could I work? My son is dead. How can I be doing these things? But I came to understand that Michael would want me to do those things, and so I do. Michael was an extraordinary young man, all of our children are. Uh, he was a combat medic with special forces. He was an award-winning designer. He had the twin natures of being both a soldier and an artist in, in one being. He was the most joyful person. Uh, he, I, I could go on and on. He just I guess above everything, he was, he was my son, and that's what really, really mattered the most. Um, what to do about this is I formed a, an organization called the National Gun Victims Action Council. Uh, our goal and what we are doing and what we have done is to bring an, add a new strategy to everything our side is doing, uh, and that strategy is an economic lever. If you think about it, every great social change, going from San Gandhi's salt mines to labor laws to civil rights to gay and lesbian rights, everyone has had an economic component. We haven't had one. We've added it. It's called Tell and Compel. If you go to our website, uh, gunvictimsaction.org, uh, you'll find it. And we, you know, hope you participate in it. It means signing a pledge. Uh, nothing I can do, or nothing any of us can do, will ever bring our loved ones back. But we have to do everything we can to prevent other parents from having to suffer this unimaginable, indescribable, never-ending, heart-wrenching loss. It's uh, it's just bewildering.